Say folks, in this episode, we have got the fire stoked up to blazing hot. So y'all come on over cause we are fixing to cook us up some stuffed bell peppers with a lot of cheese and a little Mexican twist. So come on and let's eat. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on a beautiful day the Lord has made. My name is Kent Rollins, and what do we do here? Whole lot of cowboy cooking. We do nearly anything you want to do, we can do it. But if I can't spell it, I ain't putting it in the pot. Everything we use and everything we do will be listed in the little description down below. Today, we have got something really good that is one of my favorite dishes that I really like to cook, and that is a stuffed bell pepper Mexican style. I like to add a little cumin and a little oregano to it, give it a little bite. But first, you see me take four bell peppers. Now, I like to use a red, a green, a yellow, and an orange if you got them. Whatever you want to use is fine with me. I'm not color coordinated. Take the top off of them, core them out, make sure you get all that vein out of there with a spoon. And then we're gonna put them in a Dutch oven, add a little less than a fourth of a cup of chicken broth, cook it for about 10 minutes. And why are we doing that? To soften the pepper, because I want these things when they get done to where you can cut them with a fork. So many of them stuffed bell peppers that people used to set on the table and want me to eat, you'd have to take a saw to it to get through there. So this way they're softened. If you don't want them softened and you want to use that word that Shan throws at me a lot all the time because Al got caught in a hailstorm, remember? Al dente. That's what we're talking about if you want them to crunch. So let's go ahead and take these peppers out. And when you do, these peppers are going to have a little liquid in there. Make sure you drain that out. That is from the steam and condensation. And you got to make sure also when you cut these peppers that these participants will stand up. You don't, can't have none of them that don't want to stand up because they have to stand up in there and do their job. I like to start it right off the top here with a sack of cheese that ain't never open. It's hard. <laughs> My life is hard. <laughs> and then you get to where you can't even open them. Let me get this oven open. <laughs> now you can use whatever cheese you got a liking to, but I like to start with a good pinch of cheddar in the bottom of each one of them. And pack her down in there pretty good because we want everybody to be able to have some of this in there. Now comes time to add the star of the show and what is it? Some certified Angus beef, really good hamburger meat that you've seen me put a half of a yellow onion in there diced, a little Red River Ranch mesquite, a little oregano and a little cumin. So. Take you a pretty good little spoonful, about two of them, put them down in there, and I want you to pack them because when you stuff something, it's supposed to be pretty tight. So, now so we got a layer of cheese and then a layer of meat, so let's trade flavors here and let's go with some mozzarella next and make sure, like I say, you pack it in there. But you can use whatever cheese is to your liking. Hey, I don't I got no quarrel with you on that, but it's got to have the cheese in there. I got me some good hatch green chilies that have already been roasted. We're going to pull the Beagler alarm on you. What is it, Big? He said, every time you get food out, somebody want to drop by camp. These have been roasted and peeled. Remember what I told you? Now, after you roast them on the fire, you remember the little trick I told you about taking you a pretty good little handful of water, throwing in that plastic bag, taking them off the fire, let them cool just a minute, and then stick them right in there, seal it up. The sweat will make them things peel so much easier. So let me move these fellers out of the way a minute while I carve on these just a second, because I just want to split them open. I got to get them seeds out of there. Now, if you want to leave the seeds in there, you sure can depending on what kind of heat you want. We just gonna chop him. And I'm talking chop him pretty fine. You say you don't have a disomatic like this in your kitchen? Well, this is the jumbo version you can't get, but we do have the smaller version and we have just sold our thousandth hash knife. So it was a pretty big deal for us. These are the best tool you'll ever have in the kitchen along with a piece of cast iron. Big, we have got it to this point, my friend. We're going to put us a spoonful of them green chilies in there. Sort of mash them around in each and every participant. Now 
And this guy here, I don't know if y'all noticed it, but him and him, they didn't get to nurse as long on their mother. They a little bit shorter than these other two fellers. So what comes next? More meat. Another two spoonful. Pack them really well. Now comes the time to where we're gonna intermingle and intermix. We're gonna put a little cheddar and a little mozzarella right back there to it. A little packing. More green chili. So what happens next? More meat, folks. You gotta always have plenty of the beef. What's the redo on the, what's the layering? You're Ready? Yeah. No, go ahead. So we have got them layered in there and we started out with cheddar on the bottom, then meat, then mozzarella, then more meat. No, pepper, was it pepper? No. Then some green chilies, then some mozzarella, then some more meat. I don't know, y'all have to watch the video to figure it out, <laughs> Shan. Remember. It's in the recipe, I'll tell you for that. And if you see it, you can't go wrong here as long as you layer cheese, meat, peppers, cheese, meat, peppers. We are still gonna leave our chicken broth back in here and we're gonna go ahead and put us some cheese on the top of these. Well, everybody is stuffed. Sitting in there nicely. We're gonna go over here and put us a lid on it. We're gonna start it off on a tall trivet with pretty light amount of coals today because if you can see old glory, you can see that the wind is blowing pretty good, but we'll go pretty light on top too because we gotta just melt this stuff gradually, this cheese and soften everything up because the meat is done. So Shan's giving me the deal to go on, so I'm gonna go. Well, you see me come out here and right off the deal there, I did the hot foot shuffle and kicked all them coals out of the way because we had done use them to steam them peppers a little. I want to start out with a fresh batch. So raked them away, got me a tall trivet. We're going pretty light on the outside, pretty light on top because we do have a pretty good breeze going today. We will rotate pretty frequently. But also, if you don't have a trivet and you're doing this, just back your coals off, especially on a windy day about this far, and you'll be all right. You can scoot them in as they ash out a little, but always start pretty good ways out and pretty light on top in this breeze. The peppers were steamed a little, so they're softening before we ever started. The meat is already cooked and seasoned, so now we just gotta blend all them flavors together. Spring, the wind blows more, makes it a little more difficult to cook in a Dutch oven. Now. You can pull coals away from something when it's really windy, but yesterday when we was cooking in some 40 mile an hour wind down here on this ranch, it'll nearly blow it away, blow all your heat. It'll lash it out quicker, but on one side of that oven, it's always gonna be a little hotter because you're just like a forge blowing that heat across there. You can use a windshield if you've got to, but remember if you do, you're making reflective heat that comes back in there. So put it a pretty good ways from what you're trying to cook, not just right up against it, and that way you won't radiate that heat back to it. And you gotta always remember too, in that wind, you're gonna rotate top and bottom more often because you need to regulate that heat source around there. That's about the only way we have a control in it in the windy situation. Folks had to throw me on just a little more heat on top because that wind was ashing some of that out. And we are pretty close. We rotated a time or two, we did. And you can see how things have begun to happen because I wanted that cheese in there to toast up really nice. So now it is time to add some more cheese. You can't never get by without enough. 
So just sprinkle her on there because we're fitting to come off that bottom heat. So if it sits right there, it'll be just fine. We'll put that on there till that cheese melts. Take it off the bottom heat gingerly. Let that cheese melt and sort of run off there. And then we're going to take it over to the table and let it cool. Ooh, we happy dance. Here we come. Well, it is a done deal. And you can see them peppers got good and soft up here. And that's what I'm after. Even got a little bit of that char right there on that tall one we did. But get you some of these here tongs and pick out your favorite color. Anybody got a guess which one I'm fitting to pick out, Shan? Red? Not the green one. Oh, I knew it. Whew. You're going to let that rascal cool. So I'm going to get this little fella out here to go with him just because he wanted to come. Did you see that, Shan? I just want to go ahead and I'm going to cut her right on through there. I mean, you can count it. Cheese, meat. Green chilies, cheese, meat, cheese. Whew. I might break down and do the turkey trot here on this one. You dance before you eat it. It smells so good and it looks good, honey. Ooh. Mm. The star of the show to me is the beef and the green chili but you blend it in with the little dab of heat that the green chili gives, along with the sweetness of the bell pepper, it is the perfect pair. That team will drive down the road all day long. It is good eating. The cheese, I like the two different flavors between the cheddar and the mozzarella. It sort of blends it all together. But the cumin and the oregano, hey, this is fine dining in its own. Say, Big, would you like a little bite of cheese? Huh? You wait for it now and don't do it till I tell you because it's pretty good eating. It's not hot, I promise. Okay. Folks, it didn't have no beef in it. That's why we didn't get a tail wagon award there. We hope that y'all enjoyed this recipe. It's simple and it's easy. It's sort of like one of them old classes, classic dishes to me, but we added a little oregano and a little bit of cumin there to spice it up and change it. So as always, we thank them veterans and all the servicemen and women for keeping that flag above the wagon up there that so we could have the freedom of choice to come out here and cook in this great country that we live in. Also, I'd like to thank my little sweet wife, Shan, and the Beagle for always putting out their best because that's what she does. She is the greatest producer and editor I've ever worked with in my life, and she is the love of my life. So thank you for taking time out of your busy day to watch our videos. Be sure and hit the like subscribe and be sure and share with the whole world because everybody needs more cooking and more happy dancing god bless you each and every one hope to see you down the stuffed pepper trail hey thank y'all for stopping by camp you seen boogers okay cooking in a lot of it today what do we be sorry that's wrong here you go take two so, what are we talking about today? Some stuffed bell puffers. A little Mexican puffers. puffers. He's right here. Ready? That's Maybe. the stuffed puffer. Are you a stuffed puffer? <laughs>